OK, can you solve this basic math word problem? Well, actually, I think most of you can solve this a particular problem, and a lot of you are going to solve this in like 3.7 seconds. Matter of fact, let's go and take a look at the problem. It says, you mowed one eighth of your lawn in five minutes. How long to finish the entire lawn? Now, a lot of you already have your answer, and that is fantastic. Go ahead and put that into the comment section. I'll show you the right answer in just one second. But uh, here is kind of the bonus question and really kind of the main essence of this video. Let's suppose someone, you know, uh, reads this problem and they're like, I don't get it. I'm not as smart as you. Uh, what's going on? Now, for those of you that are convinced you have the right answer, how could you teach this person? How could you justify your results? OK, because if you can do that, that means you really understand your stuff. And I'm actually going to uh, explain the solution to this uh, problem in two ways. I'll kind of use one approach, and I'll call that the common sense approach, which probably most of you took. Then I'm going to use a completely different approach that you're going to need to understand to be able to um, do more, say, challenging versions of this type of problem. Now, of course, I'll explain all of this in just one second. But uh, before we get going, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. And I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And it really is my true passion to try to make learning math as easy as possible. So if you need assistance in math, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so let's go and take a look at the answer. And a lot of you are like, oh boy, couldn't you come up with another problem? You're talking about mowing the lawn. That's my least favorite chore. Well, I'm sorry, but uh, that's my problem. Let's go take a look at the correct answer. You will have to spend 40 minutes to complete uh, the lawn, right? To mow the entire lawn. And again, I think most of you probably got this right, okay? Now, it doesn't make a difference if you did this in your, in your head, one, two, three, uh, you know, or you kind of wrote this down. If you got the right answer, you got the right answer. And that is definitely cause for celebration. So let's go and give you a nice little happy face in A plus, a 100% and multiple stars. So you can brag to your friends and uh, friends and family that indeed you are still an expert, okay? A certified professional in the area of solving basic math problems. And they're going to say, wow, I always knew you were good in math. And you're like, yes, indeed. But they won't know that you've been watching this guy on YouTube who is really helping you out improve your math skills. Now, for those of you that did not get this answer, don't panic. You're going to see exactly how to do this problem. And I'm going to show you two different approaches. Now, uh, for those of you that did do this right, I hope you put a little bit of thought into how would you explain it to this poor person who did not get this uh, answer correct, right? Because that's the whole difference between knowing something. Well, let me just say this much, okay? In my humble opinion, if you really want to um, kind of verify if you know something, and it can be mad, it could be anything, okay? Uh, can, if you can teach it, you know it, all right? So it's like um, some young people, they're super good at a particular video game they're, or, you know, social media. I'm like, hey, I'll show you exactly how to do this. I know so much about this. I'll teach you everything you need to know. Again, that's a good indicator. If you can teach something, it's a good indicator that you actually know it very, very well. All right, so let's go and get into this problem. And the first thing with any uh, problem, especially a math word problem, is you want to read it, uh, the problem more than one time. Okay, I'm going to suggest that you want to read a problem at least three times. Just don't read the problem once and then start doing stuff. Okay, read the problem one time. You know, think about it. You know, make sure you understand it. Read it a second time. Pull in some more details. And then the third time you read it, make sure you understand the question. And of course, the question can be identified by looking for the question mark and just backing up here. So we want to figure out how long it takes to finish the entire lawn. And of course, we have some information here. Now, uh, a great technique, okay, and a suggested approach to solving any uh, problem, okay, even outside of mathematics, is to visualize it, okay? And this is where you can be creative. You can come up with all different sorts of ways that make sense. So try to visualize or model this problem, okay? So I'm going to show you the way I did this problem, and, or at least kind of visualize it. So we're talking about, we did one eighth of the lawn in five minutes. So I am like, all right, I got to think about a fraction, one eighth. How can I think about that? Well, I'm going to kind of uh, structure that uh, idea in this way, all right? So if I have eight blocks, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 
one out of those eight blocks is the fraction one eighth. Okay. Now I know that it took five minutes for me to complete one eighth of the lawn. So if this, uh, all these blocks here represent the entire lawn, right? In other words, the entire, you know, uh, work uh, required to do the lawn. And here I only did one out of eight of these blocks. It took me uh, five minutes. Well, a lot of you can say, well, all right, this took you uh, five minutes right here. Well, this will take another five. This will take another five because these are all eighths, right? And then we just kind of add, um, add all these up and you'd get the right answer. Well, you're thinking in the right way. And most of you probably, you know, have some sort of variation of this. Now, a lot of you didn't even do any of this. You just kind of multiply one, two, three, got your answer. Again, that's good. But what's even better is if you can, you know, verify your solution or not verify, kind of um, tell, convince someone uh, that you did this prom correctly. All right. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at, uh, you know, this kind of common sense approach. So I'm like, all right, one eighth of uh, the lawn took five minutes. So do I have to go, through, this is one eighth, two eighths, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, uh, eight eighths or one. I have to finish all these blocks of time. So this is just simply eight times five or 40 minutes. Okay, so if you came up with some sort of variation like this, that's you know very good. And that's what you know I would expect uh, most of you to do. And this is probably the, uh, no doubt the best approach to do, uh, to do this problem. Now, there is another approach that you can uh, take to do this problem. It's a little bit more sophisticated, but it's one that you're going, you're going to have to take outside of you know, doing something like this because here we can kind of model these numbers because we're working with very basic, easy um, numbers and values. But when you have more sophisticated uh, you know, um, values and situations going on, you're going to have to think of a problem like this in different terms, and I'm going to explain that right now. But uh, before we do, I want you to explain why you would not subscribe to my YouTube channel. And you know what you're going to say? Well, there's no good reason, so I'll just subscribe. And that's going to be outstanding. And if you're going to do that, make sure to hit that uh, notification button. This really helps me big time. It helps me um, reach more people. It helps that YouTube algorithm. If it didn't help me, I wouldn't be bringing it up. So please subscribe. Matter of fact, as you're doing that, this is the way I look right now. All right, so let's get back to this problem. And what we're going to do is use some algebra uh, and some things, uh, some other things to solve this problem. Okay. Matter of fact, we're going to use something called proportions. Okay. So again, we have the same problem here. You mowed one eighth of your lawn in five minutes. How long to finish the lawn? Well, if we notice in the problem, what we have is some sort of rate. Okay. How fast we're doing the lawn, right? Or how fast. So in other words, Let's say someone's out here doing the lawn. They're like, oh boy, you know, I should have done better in my math test or my parents want to maybe do, do the lawn, da, 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 <laughs> something like that. And you're thinking, you know, all right, how fast, you know, how fast or what's the rate, okay, uh, of me uh, doing this lawn? Well, I'm like, all right, um, I'm doing one eighth of the lawn uh, every five minutes, okay? That is a rate, if you will. And if you think about uh, rates, and if you've ever heard of this word in mathematics, uh, it kind of goes along with a few other words, okay? One of which is being proportions. So for those of you that are taking some sort of math class or algebra course, uh, you might have um, come across topics called rates, ratios, and proportions, okay? So you can look at this problem in this way because we can kind of define the, uh, uh, you know, the pace of someone, you know, mowing the lawn. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at how we can do this. So let's uh, define first the rate of somebody mowing this lawn. All right, so they do one eighth of the lawn per every five minutes. Now this is um, I'm using the word rate, okay, and I'm also using the word ratios here. And both rates and ratios are nothing more than fractions, okay. A uh, ratio is when you can compare. Uh, the units of measure are the same, okay? And I don't want to go off on too many tangents. By the way, if you're studying rates and ratios, proportions, I have a ton of additional videos on this on my YouTube channel, but uh, my best stuff would be in my algebra courses. Uh, you'll see, uh, you'll find the links to those in the description below. But a rate is where you have a fraction and you're comparing two different units of measure. So here I'm comparing like how much lawn I'm doing by time, 
All right, so these units of measure have nothing to do with one another, whereas a ratio uh, would be something like a 1 to 20 teacher-student uh, ratio. Okay, one teacher to 20 students. Probably a lot of you, uh, you know, are familiar with this, you know, like in the uh, class size, one teacher to 20 students. Now, a lot of you might be saying, hey, Mr. YouTube Math Man, aren't these uh, two different um, units of measure? Well, no, okay, what we're counting up here is people. Okay, yes, indeed, uh, you may not agree, but a teacher is a person, all right? And so as a student, so we're counting human beings. We're here, we're counting how much long, and here we're counting time, all right? So this is a rate, and this is a ratio, right? Big, big topic in math. And again, I'm not going to get really heavy duty into it right now because I don't want to kind of overwhelm you. But uh, anyways, we can uh, define the pace of someone doing this lawn as a rate. Now, what do we do with this rate? Well, we're going to use a proportion. And what is a proportion? A proportion is actually, let me go and show you right here. A proportion is what we um, call uh, two. Well, a proportion by definition is two equal fractions, two equal fractions, okay? So I kind of did this, yeah, let me kind of back up here and let me explain this real quick. So if I have the fraction one over two, let me erase this real quick. All right, so let's suppose I have the fraction one over two. Give me another fraction that is equal to one half, okay? There's all sorts of fractions. Some of you are saying, uh, how about four over eight? Some of you are thinking five over 10. Some of you might be saying seven over 14. Uh, it doesn't make a difference. Some of you are saying three over six. Let's use three over six. Okay, so all of these fractions, there's an infinite amount of fractions that is uh, equal to one half. So three over six. Now, why, did I, why am I kind of doing this? Well, I'm showing you a very, very important principle when it comes to proportions. So a proportion, again, is one fraction that is equivalent to another fraction. And when you have that kind of situation, what you, is uh, true is something called the cross product. In other words, when we cross multiply, the values will be the same. So six times one is what? Six, and that's gonna be equal to two times three, which of course is six. So when you have the cross product, uh, uh, when you have a proportion, the cross products are always true, and you can use that to solve any sort uh, proportion problem. Okay, so uh, let's go ahead and set this up. So what we're going to do is right here we have our rate of uh, this person mowing the lawn. Unfortunately, they have to you know do this work maybe on the weekend or something, but uh, no big deal. So one eighth of the lawn per five minutes, and what we want to think about is how long it's going to take them to do all eight out of eight of those blocks, right? So here this is one. If we kind of go back to our little uh, concept here. They did one block out of eight per five minutes. How long is it going to have, have them do? How long is it going to take to have them do all eight of those blocks, right? Eight out of eight. So we want to know this is the entire job. This is the entire work, right? Eight out of eight of the lawn over X minutes. We don't know how many minutes. That is the question. So this is how you would set up a proportion. Okay. And this again is probably a technique that you know most of you didn't do and that's perfectly fine it's a nice easy problem to kind of introduce you to this concept all right so eight out of eight is the same thing as what one all right so generally speaking when you're looking at um uh word problems math word problems algebra word problems that involve work you know uh, how much it takes to complete a job a full complete job is typically one one unit all right, so and again, remember the lawn, we're looking to see how long it takes to, to complete the lawn. It's eight out of eight. Eight divided by eight is one. Okay, so here is our proportion. Now we're ready to use the cross product, right? We can just simply cross multiply, and let's go ahead and do that now. But uh, just again, as a reminder, when we do cross multiply, uh, you're using the cross product, and actually kind of had this a little bit in the, uh, the wrong order, but just to verify this again, uh, the cross product is going to be when we cross multiply like so, right? So 8 times 1 is 8, and 2 times 4 is also 8, all right? The cross product, this is a very important concept in mathematics, and we're going to apply it to this proportion right here. All right, so let's go do that now. So we have 1 eighth of the lawn times x and at this point we're just going to kind of drop all uh, these units of measure lawn minutes 
lawn. Uh, we just know that x, we're solving for this variable x, is going to be, its units is going to be in minutes. Okay, we do know that. But let's just kind of distill this down into um, uh, the values, okay? So in other words, I have 1 8 5, 1, and x, okay? So uh, you're going to be thinking about these numbers. You don't really have to be um, thinking about the actual units of measure at this point, okay? So here we're going to have x times 1 8. In algebra, we can write that as 1 8 x, right? So x times 1 8, that's the same thing as 1 8 x. It would be x times 1 8, but uh, it's uh, better to write the variable at the end, all right? So that's at, uh, 1 8 times x, and then 5 times 1 is, of course, 5, all right? Okay, so if you understand this, then all we need to do is solve this basic equation for x, and to solve this equation, all we need to do is multiply both sides of the equation by 8, uh, so 8 times 1 8th, when we multiply these uh, fractions right here, we get 1x or x, and then 5 times 8, of course, is 40. So x is equal to 40 minutes. Remember, x, the value of x, when we set up this proportion, was in minutes. That's why you know when you got your answer for x, it is in uh, the unit of measure of minutes. Okay, now most of you are like, oh, okay, come on, Mr. YouTube math man. You know, you made this problem so much harder than it had to be. You know, like you got my hair standing up. Uh, you know, this is an easy problem and you're making it into a hard problem. Well, you know, yes and no, okay? Uh, of course, I would not solve this particular problem using uh, uh, ratio or uh, proportions and rates. I would not do that, okay? However, this little problem is an excellent little kind of a example prompt to introduce you to these concepts if you're not familiar with them because you're going to have to understand uh, rates, ratios, proportions to handle these type of particular problems, right? Not everything is going to be nice and simple as this basic uh, math word problem, but uh, as you, uh, you know, progress in mathematics, you know, you're, what you're doing is building your toolbox of skills and knowledge, right? Just like anything, here is your lovely toolbox, you know, Sometimes if you want to do um, some sort of job, yeah, maybe you, you can use a hammer or a screwdriver or whatever the case might be. You know, but what you want to do is have a lot of different tools available uh, to you to, you know, um, handle problems, okay, math word problems. And, you know, again, not, you know, every single problem is going to give you a hint on what to do, right? That's why there's different approaches. That's why you need to read the problem, think about it, and reflect. And quite frankly, if somebody you know did this in a completely different way, as long as they as long as they can kind of tell their story to this person and convince them, oh, I understand now. Well, that's what counts. Okay. So if you're like, ah, oh, but I've done it this way, that's perfectly fine. Again, as long as you what you're doing is mathematically correct and it's justified and you know it's kind of in a logical manner, then that is good as well. All right, so with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time, and have a great day.